So it's been less than a week since we've had the M4 Mac Mini in our hands, and it's already being put up on this pedestal as pretty much the best value computer that you can buy on the market today. So in this video, I wanna take a look at the M4 Mac Mini, the baseline version, and see if it's actually worth all this hype. Let's get into it. So in short, the TLDR here is that yes, the M4 Mac Mini, the baseline model at $599 is pretty much unmatched at this price point, at this value, at the speed to performance ratio, and at this physical size and form factor. It's just, we haven't really seen anything else like that. You normally have to either spend a lot of money to get this form factor this small and this compact, or you're gonna get something that's much bigger with a much higher price point, or if you do wanna build something that's at this price point, it's not gonna be as small, as compact, or nearly as powerful. So. How Apple was able to get this done is beyond me, but I do wanna get a little bit more nuanced as to what it means when it comes to all this hype and why I think it is worth your hard-earned money if it's something that you are on the market for. So I do quickly wanna talk about the overall design of the new M4 Mac Mini because it is a beautiful little design, and yes, on the surface, it's just a metal box that Apple has put together. It is a five inch by five inch square that is rounded off, obviously, and it's two inches in height, so it is very, very small especially compared to the Mac Mini that it's replacing, right? The Mac Mini that it's replacing was a little bit shorter from a depth perspective or height perspective, but it was much bigger from a footprint perspective. So it is nice that it's very compact, it's lightweight, so technically, and we are working on a really cool video on some portable Mac Mini setups, you can bring this Mac Mini with you anywhere you go, it's got a decently sized power cable. It doesn't have a power supply that's extended past it. The power supply is built into the Mac Mini itself. And at its peak, it's only pulling 140 watts of power for a desktop that's absolutely unreal. But to continue with the design and the port aspect here, what I love about this is that they really simplified everything but still gave you some of the most important ports that you would need from a desktop computer. So on the rear, and we're gonna be talking again about the baseline model because the M4 Pro does have Thunderbolt 5 ports and things like that. But I wanna stick to the $599 version and also stick around at the end because I'm gonna show you guys how to get 50 or $100 off this thing to make it even cheaper. But on the rear itself, you're gonna get three Thunderbolt 4 ports that do support up to 40 gigs of transfer speeds, which is awesome to see. You also have an HDMI port, and then you have an ethernet port alongside the actual power port to be plugged in and be able to be powered on. So as I mentioned, those Thunderbolt 4 ports are gonna be plenty fast for pretty much anything that you throw at it. So for me, for instance, I have my 4K monitor plugged in directly to my Mac Mini. It is my 4K BenQ monitor, and it's powering that very easily and very simply. I also have a USB-C enabled speaker that I have plugged in there. And as of right now, I have that final port empty. I do plan on probably putting my CalDigit hub on there again, but let's see if I actually need all those additional ports with my simple setup. And then additionally, on the front of the Mac Mini, you get two USB-C ports that are USB 3 speeds, giving you 10 gigs of transfer speeds, which is more than enough to move some data around whenever you need to. I, for instance, forego plugging in my SSD on the rear because it's a little harder to get to. I'd rather just plug it in the front and save my time plugging it in and then be able to transfer my data that way. If I do wanna go a little bit faster, then I will plug it into the rear when I do need to. And I do recommend getting external storage to be able to get that baseline model because now with Thunderbolt 4 and having these SSDs that are so fast, you don't really need to get internal storage unless you really absolutely want to. But that's a choice that you personally have to make and I personally like to use external storage because it is plenty fast for my use cases. And then finally, you do have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I do wish that they had the SD card reader and they brought that over from the Mac Pro. But again, beggars can't be choosers and we can only ask for so much at this price point. And then another big addition that came to the M4 Mac Mini, and actually to the entire Mac lineup in general, is that every single M4 Mac moving forward will now have 16 gigs of baseline unified memory, which is double of what we had in the past. I know unified memory is one of those things that I recommended to people. If they could upgrade, I would recommend that's the only thing that they need to upgrade to kind of future-proof themselves a little bit. And now that we have 16 gigs of unified memory and RAM, that's more than enough, especially for some basic tasks and even a little bit more than that. If you do wanna upgrade, the baseline version can go up to 32 gigs of RAM and then the M4 Pro can go up to 64 gigs of RAM. But I kept this one with 16 gigs of RAM and then it does come with 256 gigs of base storage. But like I mentioned, I do have some external SSDs that I use by Lexar and by Samsung that are two and four terabytes respectively, which are less than $200 for the two terabyte and less than $300 for the four terabyte. If I were to spec out the storage in my Mac Mini, that's an additional $200 per every increase of internal storage. So definitely keep that in mind if you are somebody looking to get additional storage for your Mac Mini. So now let's talk about some numbers when it comes to geek benching and comparing it to previous models and what you're paying for and the value you're getting because that's where all this hype is. It's just the amount of sheer and raw power that you can get from a baseline M4 Mac Mini compared to the previous predecessors that we've had in the past that are not only a little bit slower, but are four, five, six X the price that they were when they originally came out. 
So let's start off, like I mentioned, with that M4 Mac Mini to create a baseline. And when we're talking about single core usage, we're getting a score of 3,838. And for multi-core scores for Geekbench, we're getting 14,838 which again are just numbers at the end of the day, but now let's compare this to the last Mac Mini we had, which was the M2 Pro Mac Mini. You could get the M2 Mac Mini, but just to let you guys know exactly what you're getting in terms of the power that the M4 gives you, the M2 Pro Mac Mini gave us a single core score of 2,658, and then a multi-core score of 14,475, meaning that the single core score on the M4 is about 50% faster, and they're roughly the same when it comes to multi-core score, but the price point is where we get interesting, right? Because with the M4 Mac Mini, it's $600, and the M2 Pro Mac Mini started at $1,300. So that's over twice the price for way less power, which again, this is where the hype starts to really become real in terms of the price to performance ratio you're getting because the value is just something we've never seen before from a sheer power and raw performance standpoint. So now to kind of blow your mind even that much more from a numbers perspective, the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, if we compare it to that one, from a single core score, we're getting 3,127. Again, keep in mind that the M4, the regular M4 chip on the Mac Mini is almost at 4,000. So you're still about 25% better compared to that M3 Max chip. And that M3 Max chip on the single core usage, that M3 Max MacBook Pro, the 16 inch version, is $3,100. It's about 5x the price, even a little bit more compared to the Mac Mini, and you're still getting a better single core performance. Now the multi-core, you're going from 14,800 on the M4 Mac Mini to about 18,500 on that M3 Max MacBook Pro, but still, to get that kind of performance at about a fifth of the price is absolutely unreal, and I can't reiterate enough, this price to performance ratio is something we hadn't seen before, and I'm getting that same feeling we got when the original M1 chip came out on that MacBook Air, where it seemed like Apple kind of broke Moore's Law from that price to performance ratio, because Moore's Law pretty much got us at that stagnation point with the Intel chip, and then Apple just blew everything out of the water with that M1 chip. And then one final mind-blowing comparison I want to make is to the M1 Max MacBook Pro, which retailed for $3,500 back when it released, and that gave us a single core score of 2,374 and a multi-core score of 12,226. So not only is the multi-core and single core performance much better, but that is one sixth the price of the M1 Max MacBook Pro when it originally released, and that's now in a $600 Mac Mini. So again, if you are looking for a desktop computer that can do pretty much everything you're ever gonna need it to do, this is an absolute no-brainer. And now normally I'm not one to just kind of shoot out numbers and talk to you guys from Geekbench scores and things like that because that's not a real world usage scenario, but I did want to briefly talk about how I've been using my Mac Mini. Again, it's only been a few days, but I use it for pretty much all those minimal tasks and then a little bit more. You might already know at this point that my main workhorse is my M4 iPad Pro. I use it to edit my videos, my thumbnails, so I'm not really pushing my M4 Mac Mini to that kind of 10th degree like most people will be. But I do use this for regular everyday things like going in Slack, using it for email, using it for iMessage, using it to watch the occasional video, using it to watch YouTube, using it to have music playing in the background. And then sometimes I do a little bit more when I am testing, right? Maybe I'll play a little bit of Apple Arcade and I'll play NBA 2K on there, which it handles amazingly well, I might add. And I definitely have a whole video coming up about the M4 Mac Mini and gaming on it and how realistic that is because for a casual gamer like myself, the M4 Mac Mini is more than enough as long as you have the correct titles that you want to play at the end of the day. But again, it's going to handle everything that you want it to handle, even from a Microsoft perspective. As somebody who uses PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, and all those different applications that Microsoft Suite gives you, it handles all that amazingly well. Now, if you're a master Excel user, some people have said that the Excel version for Mac is a little bit different than the Windows version for Mac, and there might be a couple things missing, but let me know in the comment down below if that's what you think but for a basic excel user it'll handle everything that you need to and then some so absolutely the m4 mac mini is worth all the hype that it's getting and deservedly so and if you guys do want to get this mac mini for a little bit cheaper because right now it is retailing from apple at 599 but amazon actually has it listed for 579 but they also have a 30 dollar coupon on there which brings it down to 549 directly from Amazon, and again, it's brand new. So you're saving 50 bucks for the, the identical thing. And then also, if you have a .edu email, or if you're a student or a teacher or in the academia world, you can get this for $100 cheaper from Apple's website, especially here in the US, and they don't ask for any verification or anything, just something to denote. So you can definitely get the M4 Mac Mini for $499. So again, to add insult to injury in that fact, the best bang for buck computer you can get is technically $499, everybody. 
But that will just about do for this video, everybody. I do want to reiterate that if you have one of those older Macs that I was mentioning before, those are still powerful enough to get your everyday tasks done, right? It's not like going from the M3 to the M4 is going to be an insane difference or anything like that. It's more so just like in a silo, the value that you're getting out of this M4 chip and out of this Mac Mini is something that we haven't seen before. So I personally upgraded from my M2 MacBook Air and I completely replaced it with my M4 Mac Mini. I use my iPad Pro as my mobile computing solution and I use my M4 Mac Mini kind of as my desktop when I'm not doing anything serious, right? I kind of use it backwards where I use my iPad Pro for real serious work and I use my M4 Mac Mini now for kind of those Slack and messaging and, and those lighter tasks that I like to use it for. But that'll do it everybody. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. Is the Mac Mini overhyped? Did you end up picking one? Is the M4 chip everything that you want it to be? If you did upgrade, what did you upgrade from? All questions that I want to have answered by you guys and I'll make sure to go down there and comment and we'll have a discussion down below. But that'll do it. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. If you want to check out some wallpapers, definitely consider becoming a channel member to get monthly wallpapers that we update again on a monthly basis. But that'll do it. If you want to watch, but that will do it. If you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.